talking about Syria, it strikes me, especially after the, um, the enormous uh, crisis that has struck Lebanon and the massive popular um, involvement in Lebanon seeking changes there and very similar histories and relationships with empire. I wonder if there's any way that Lebanon and Syria could together seek a better future, reconstruction, um, you know, a stronger relationship moving forward. I realize the history has mainly because of imperialism has uh, been tricky between the two countries, but I wondered if there's any hope uh, moving forward together. There should be, there absolutely should be. Lebanon is, I mean, look, these countries have artificial borders that were drawn by imperial powers that were drawn by the British um, and the French. And they're the, the, I mean, their they're, they're borders completely man-made, you know, Lebanon is just this like little slice of a country. It's like a port country um on the mediterranean sea and syria is way bigger and together they could have everything they need i mean lebanon has the ports right uh syria has productive capacity it has like a labor force it has factories you know until the war on syria uh the last 10 years syria was self-sufficient in producing its own medicines now it has to import everything um but you know it it has factories pharmaceutical factories um it, you know, makes its own clothes, its own shoes. You know, Syria was famous for making its own socks that they would like import or they would export to Turkey. Uh, they grow their own food. Um, Lebanon has, you know, this banking infrastructure that's obviously collapsing right now, but it could be useful uh, for financial reasons. And, you know, until the Beirut port blast, a lot of what was going into Syria was coming in through the Beirut port. So these countries should be able to have a normal relationship and work together regionally. And I'm not just, I mean, not just Syria and Lebanon, Iraq as well. You know, Iraq has great agricultural production and it's rich in oil, right? It has all, it produces all this oil. It has like the biggest oil reserves in the region. Um, but because of uh, these imperial powers, these countries have not only been given these false borders, but also, you know, in Lebanon, it's a very polarized country, half the country is pro Hezbollah, is pro resistance, is pro Iran, is, is against, you know, Israel. Um, the other half of the country is pro America, pro Saudi Arabia. Um, and this part of the, this political, I'm talking politically, uh, not like the actual individuals of the country, but politically the country is very fractured. And this uh, side of the, the uh, political parties in Lebanon that, you know, work with the United States and work with the Saudis, are obstructionists when it comes to uh, working with the Syrians. They are basically just tools of the Americans. Uh, so they, you know, block that from ever happening. They absolutely despise and hate Syria. Um, they hate Iran. I mean, you know, Lebanon had a fuel crisis last year where I think there was like electricity cuts that were like in the center of Beirut, uh, the center of the capital. There were electricity cuts up to like 20 hours a day in the middle of summer. If anybody's been to Beirut in the summertime, it is. You, you can't breathe outside, it's too humid and hot. Um, and even at this time when the population was really suffering, even elites didn't have electricity, you still had a refusal by the pro-Western political elements in this country to accept free oil from Iran. <laughs> like, like that's, a, so that's, that's the sort of obstructionism that you're dealing with when it comes to cooperation between these two countries. Um, but it absolutely is in Lebanon's interest. It's in Syria's interest. It's in Iraq's interest. It's in Iran's interest to have this sort of regional cooperation. But the Gulf countries with their American partners and the Israelis prevent this and it behooves them for these countries to be split up the way they are. I would like to see hope, but you asked if there's hope. I would like to, I mean, I'm hopeful that at some point, because it's like a logical end game, like at some point existentially, you know, you have to work together or else people won't have enough to eat. But, you know, tools of empire within these countries are also very powerful. So it's, you know, kind of like you have to wait and see.